ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen and ladies. Ladies and gents. Lauren Hill. She's talking about the other guy. In my opinion, Lauren Hill's been through a lot. But Mrs. X Fuji's um I think is a very good singer, great singer, in my opinion. And this was it's one of those things you had to be around in that era. We're just gonna talk now. No law. Well, a little bit of law, but not not no mortgages, no law or anything. Sorry, I'm I'm a little disturbed by something right now. And I wanna share that with all of you. You want to share that you're disturbed? <laughs> we already know that. <laughs> you gonna tell us? <laughs> oh, that that this. Oh, okay, sorry. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I decided to click on one of those YouTube videos, and the highlight of the video was George Floyd's death that we were told wrong, and when I clicked on it. Two gentlemen. Those they're, they're two Negroes, because that's the only way I could describe them. Is that, especially because of what they're talking about, the way they were talking, they have to be Negroes. Okay, they're not black, not African American. They're Negroes because of how they delivered the information. You can, I can tell where they were headed. Now I haven't seen the video that they're talking about. The fall of Minneapolis is the name of the video. The fall of Minneapolis is the name of the video. The fall of Minneapolis is the name of the video. It's on Rumble. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the actual camera footage from the officers, what you've never seen before. Now they, they this stuff was done months ago. They they've known about this. People have probably seen it already. I haven't. I can't watch it. The first thing the video does, I, I started to watch it. I'm downloading it now, but I started to watch it. And then it disturbed me so much that I had to turn it off because I don't want to see that. Don't care what the outcome was, what the situation was, what the so-called truth is. I don't want to see that again. Now, hold on. Told you I can't handle stuff like that. The first thing these intelligent demographers are, well, they, they did a demographic film. Not the two gentlemen that I was just talking about, but the people who produced the film. They did a demo, demography, documentary. And ladies and gentlemen, the very first thing these idiots did in this particular film is they talk about George Floyd's past. Excuse me, what did that day have to do with his past? No, no, hold on. When the officer showed up, they didn't know who he was from Tom, Dick, or Mary. What did it have to do with his past? So why did that one-sided, ignorant crew decide they wanted to tell you about George Floyd's past? Whether it's true or not, it's not my concern. Because that man is not alive to speak for himself right now. Okay? George Floyd is not alive to speak for himself. So they want to bring up his past. Because that's what they want you to focus on. They want you to focus on the fact that George Floyd was not a saint. Nobody ever said George Floyd was a saint. I mean, there were pictures of him, <laughs> like angel wings and all that stuff. But no, nobody ever said that George Floyd was a saint. He wasn't marketed as a saint. They said they found cocaine in his system. But hold on. They didn't say he was high. They just said they found cocaine in his system. Ladies and gentlemen, that cocaine could have been from 10, 7, 8, 100 years ago. They, they don't know. Was it active in the system? They didn't say. Why? Because it was too much politics involved. You can't believe the story, even if you wanted to. But I, I, I haven't seen this so-called documentary. Because I don't trust the people who did the documentary. And why? Because they had an agenda. How do I know they had an agenda? Because we live in an era of propaganda. Okay, let's see if we can do this. We, we need to do this, so give me a second. I got to see... Yeah, we're going to ask ChatGPT. No, this is... No, I don't want to do that. Uh, we're going to ask uh, Bard. We're going to do a, a new... 
what you call it. Wake up. Wake up. It doesn't want to listen to me, guys. Yeah, it doesn't want to listen to me. Stop listening. Now you see how it says to influence. Let me pause y'all for a second while I get this headset thing taken care of. I apologize. I had to start the voice recognition over again, but let's go ahead and let him tell you what propaganda means. Propaganda. Influencing opinions through information. Propaganda can be defined as the deliberate spreading of information, ideas, or opinions with the aim of influencing public opinion or behavior. It often involves presenting biased or manipulative information to achieve a specific agenda, and can range from subtle persuasion to outright lies. Here are some key aspects of propaganda. Intentionality. That doesn't make any sense. It's a deliberate act used to sway people's thoughts and... I'm going to have to live without them. All right, ladies and gentlemen, propaganda can be defined as the deliberate spreading of information, ideas, and opinions with the name of influencing people's opinion and behavior. It often involves presenting biased or manipulated information to achieve a specific agenda. It can range from subtle persuasion to outright lies. Pay attention. I want you all to hold on for a second. I told you the very first thing the movie did was it highlighted George Floyd's past. Very first thing. It highlighted George Floyd past. Why did it do that? We don't get to hear about the officers' past. Well, then you heard all about that in trial. I didn't hear nothing about their trial. I didn't listen to their trial. But I'm talking about this particular film, The Fall of Minneapolis. If they really wanted to be objective, then they should have been objective. Instead of talking about his past, they could have started with, it was a such and such morning. First day, blah, 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 the week at such and such time. Um, we see images of him in the store, and he's getting ready to pay for an item at the clerk. Okay, the clerk notices something wrong, calls the police. The police show up, and they take the police outside, and they point out his vehicle. They could have done that, but they didn't do that. They started off by talking about his prior arrest and so-called rap cheat so to speak then what you guys don't understand is that they listed aliases that they are claiming he used ladies and gentlemen right now to this day these idiots because i said that my name is 10 names long that i could be a hundred different people at one time if i choose to now they're all of a sudden creating aliases for me without me ever using any of these stupid aliases, but saying that they're attributed to me. So just because there's a piece of paper with some information on it doesn't make it believable. If there's any proof, then show the proof. But then George Floyd was not on trial. So why introduce that information? I can't watch that junk. And I probably, you know, I, I like to be objective, but I can't be objective when I know that it's slanted. I don't want to see George Floyd die again. I've seen him die at least 700 times. At least 700 times. That's enough death. How many times are you guys going to kill him, in my opinion? No, 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 hold on. Pay attention. They're saying in the movie that the officers did not kill him. How do they know? They're just watching a film. They took this large man and kept him on his chest with leaning on his back. That does not allow your lungs to expand. You try breathing with somebody standing on your back. Go ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, I will tell you this. I, not only do I have uh, muscular dystrophy, myasthenia gravis, but I told my doctor... I have a difficult time uh, sitting in a chair and bending over to tie my shoe. 
because it's like it cuts off my air. He explains what type of issue that is. I didn't really pay attention to him. I just know that it happens all the time. And the fact that that cuts off my air to the point to where I have to sit back up after about 30 or 40 seconds to catch my breath, then who's to say that George Floyd did not have a similar issue? They can't say that because there was nobody who did an autopsy on the man to determine that. Did not happen. This is Lita James, y'all. She's singing the song called Angels in the Sky. Now, in my opinion, this woman can sing. Lita James. Now, I stumbled onto Lila James because I download music just to be downloading. I think uh, the gentleman's name was John Mahoney um, downloaded a song which I believe is Cisco but I'm not sure but downloaded it and the song is alright. Anyway, let's get back to the George Floyd thing. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been talking about propaganda. I want to do you guys a favor. We're going to go here for a second. People have been commenting on my referencing the Bible from time to time and pointing out certain things. I treat the Bible the same way I treat the law. If I can't prove it, I don't talk about it. I use the Bible to prove itself. I use the law to prove itself. Why? Because those are facts. That's not me trying to sway somebody left or right. If I find that I'm wrong about something, which doesn't happen ever, <laughs> but if I did, it so happened to be wrong then I would definitely come out and tell people, hey, I was wrong. Okay, sorry, we're going to bring that back. I got to get me some shape here. Come on now. All right, that's what we're going to do. Now we're going to go here to the Biblia. We're gonna go, uh, let's do the study Bible. And then we're going to go all the way down to Revelation. I used to pronounce it with an S. Revelations with an S and an older gentleman corrected me, said it's not revelations, it's revelation. And I was like, look here, mother, you could have been more tactful. Sit up here and correct me again, mother. <clears throat> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> anyway, let's, <laughs> serious, he was a Jehovah's Witness, so, <laughs> and I did not appreciate his correcting me at that point. I thought it was an irrelevant point, but nonetheless, he was corrected. It's revelation and not revelations. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go to the 16th chapter of Revelation. We're going to look at verse number 14 and 15 are the two. Oh, it didn't do it. Hold on. Okay. We get, and these are verses that individuals who are Jehovah's Witnesses, they know very well. Hold on. Where are we doing this one right here? Let's, uh, largest. All right, so y'all can see, because some of y'all are blind as bats and cows and ducks and, you know, pigeons. All right. I want y'all, oh, it is 14 and 13. So I want y'all to pay attention to verse 14 and 13. And I saw three, number three is putting for emphasis. The number three represents emphasis. Okay. Unclean, which means it's not associated with God. Inspired expressions means that they're utterances. Let's see if I'm right. We're going to click on this. Well, it says unclean spirits, but unclean inspired expressions or utterances. Now, just to prove it, watch this. Make sure that we, we own the money. D-E-F-I-N-I-T-I-O-N. -I Don't want you to ever take my word for it. That's why I do this. Every time I say something, if I's wrong, let's see who do this. I don't know Sid. Like I said, I download a whole lot of stuff. I don't know who he is. Expressions can have a multiple of meanings, depending on the context. Here are some. I don't want a mathematics. It did say three, but that we know it didn't mean. It says inspired expressions. Language, a group of words used to convey a complete thought. 
<laughs> this can be a simple phrase like I love you. That's an expression. <laughs> an expression of love. In other fields, computer science, music, art expression, specific meaning of expression will depend on the context of its use. To understand the meaning, uh, let's do this. Okay. Expressions mean utterances. That's what I said. Yes. In many contexts, the meaning of expression or utterances can overlap significantly. Both terms can refer to spoken or written statements. Thank you. We're dealing with utterances or expressions uttered because it talks about mouth. Hold on. That look like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. Frogs were considered an unclean um, an unclean creature in the Bible. So it was why there was with the Egyptians, they worshipped what's known as the frog god, a false god. And so that's why one of the plagues was the frogs. So unclean frogs, hand in hand. Coming out of the mouth of the dragon. The dragon is another word for Satan. How do we know? 12th chapter of Revelation, verse number 9 and 10, okay, explains who he is. And out of the mouth of a wild beast. And out of the mouth of the false prophet. So expressions coming out of their mouths, unclean, and a false prophet means that they're false expressions. Propaganda, people. That's the definition of... Uh oh, I didn't mean to do that. I apologize. Let's do this so that you guys will understand. We will go here and we will go back to propaganda. And we will go to not that one. We want propaganda. Rahia. Here's some key aspects of propaganda intentionality. It is a deliberate act used to sway people's thoughts and actions. Selective information. It often presents only one side of the story and manipulates facts to promote a specific viewpoint. Emotional appeal. It uses various techniques to invoke emotion like fear, anger, patriotism, influencing audiences beyond a purely rational level. That's what I saw in that film when I first turned it on. I was, I, I was going to watch it objectively. But then the first thing it did is it showed his past. Why? What did that have to do with the story? His past had nothing to do with the story. Had nothing to do with what happened that morning. They said he passed a fake 20. That was it. A piece of paper that has no value. They said he passed a fake 20. A piece of paper that has no value. Now, hold on now. If you want to deal with the law, and let's get technical, they accepted the passage of that paper. They did not reject the passage of that paper. He did not run out of the store. So if you have me, and I'm at the side, I'm going, uh-uh, offer an acceptance. And the only person who could bring a claim against that item being fraudulent is the United States Treasury. The police have no jurisdiction because that's federal, not state. And the United States Treasury, the Department of Printing and, Engage and uh, Engraving, would have the only jurisdiction over the issue. But then we would be going too far because then I would take it all the way to the roots where the people are the ones who gave him the opportunity for doing that. And since his promissory notes equal the value of Federal Reserve notes, of course he could pass off a promissory note. There is nothing in the law that says that his junk, blah, 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 I could go on and on and on would argue in that point. By going back to the original, showing how there is no, that's Deborah Clark, she says it hurts so much. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, there is no way on this planet that bringing up his past has anything to do with trying to prove to people that that's how Minneapolis fell. Because George Floyd had a past. 
that had nothing to do with the story that they were trying to portray, or at least according to the title, at least according to what they claimed their objective was. Lord have mercy. So I wanted to share that with you guys uh, because I'm very disturbed by that. But then you all have to do the same thing. I like this song by Deborah. I, I used to listen to it all the time. This is Deborah, guys. And she's been very active lately, and I'm grateful that she has. I wish that Deborah was doing more because I think this woman can do more than say. Thank you, Miss D. All right. There was something else I wanted to tell you guys. I woke up this morning, was going to tell you, and then I said, nah, this ain't their business. They don't need to know this. But for there are a lot of people out there who are concerned, worried about me. I just spoke with Daniel. Daniel, you guys don't know Daniel. Daniel knows y'all, but y'all don't, don't know Daniel. Daniel is 786 years old. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I said it. Anyway, Daniel called me today, and before we got off the phone, he literally asked me, how was I doing? And when I tried to skate around it, he says, no, I want to know how are you doing? Ladies and gentlemen, Daniel and I have known each other since 2011. Daniel has been to several of my seminars, and he's kept in touch with me. I've tried to help Daniel as best I could when I could, and Daniel's all right, okay? he He's all right. And he called me yesterday, and I was busy conducting one of those meetings dealing with credit. This is this is a little tidbit for some of you who hang, hung around until now. Daniel was wondering about the credits and how to do the credits and how to do it on their credit report and everything. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to create a template for you. I'm going to pay somebody to create the template for the 1040 and the 1040C. And I'm going to have them create the template. And where I'm going to make the template available. Okay, and I don't care if the IRS or the grandmama gets upset with me helping you guys understand how to document your tax credits because they should have done it. It's a template, so that means you'll have to add in everything else that needs to be added in or you take it to your tax agent and say, hey, I need this to be completed. I need help completing this. You see, the first thing a tax agent wants to know is well, where did the credits come from? That doesn't matter where they came from. I just need the math done. I will sign it. You don't even have to do anything. Just need you to confirm the math. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a group that will be helping people to document their debt and their credits and their agreements with these companies, especially when it comes to the Federal Reserve Act. They will be helping to document the business credits. They will be helping to document the relationship, that partnership that was created as a result of the agreement. Been training them for the last two months, so I haven't been just sitting around on my hands. I've been doing five different companies. Uh, we have, I'm seven days a week, and I'd rather not be. Okay? Rather not be, but I, too many of you guys need help. That's why I was going to stop doing the consultations. And I, yeah, too many people called me and said, hey, dude, I know you stopped in the consultation, but I don't know what I'm going to do. I really could use your help. Okay, fine. So I took down the video saying I wasn't going to do consultations anymore because too many people were commenting and telling me that they needed the consultation. <sighs> Literally, even one guy last night, contacting me and asking me for the instructions and how uh, what's the turnaround period for when they pay and everything. Ladies and gentlemen, when you get a consult with me, you get an immediate communication explaining everything. Everything. The time to call, when to call, the need to call, you have to call, that type of thing. Lord have mercy. But I'm going to sit up here and I'm not doing this for nobody's ducats. I don't care about your money. It's about time. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, the information that I'm going to let you know is that the new group to help people with their taxes and everything will be roughly 
the beginning of February. We're still training. There's still some information that they have to get. But I'll be talking and going over and training them to make sure that they have everything down packed. There are some people who have quite a bit of experience. And so they're going to help to keep the group going in the right direction. They are doing a lot of study. They're not taking it lightly. They're taking it seriously because they can benefit from the information as well. So you guys will be told about that shortly. Okay, do not write. Do not ask anybody. Do not contact SACOM or anybody else asking, what about the new group? I don't want to hear it. I said February. Sorry. I'll mention something. Next thing you know, these these individuals, these selfish individuals, want to start calling and asking before anybody said, it's all right, you guys can start calling and asking and inquiring. Lord have mercy. Okay, back to the health thing. Uh, there's a storm system coming in right now in California, um, hitting San Francisco area and then sweeping on down to my area. The barometric pressure, this is a pretty large storm system. It's going to last for three days starting tomorrow. For San Francisco, it started today. And it's going to last for three days. I've been having muscle cramps lately. And I've been telling people about that. I was like, I have three muscle cramps, and I haven't had a muscle cramp in almost a year. And that doesn't normally happen. I usually get the muscle cramps when my creatine levels are up, CK levels. Creatine levels. Clark Kent? No, creatine levels. CK, Clark, Clark Kent. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, the very fact that the muscle cramps have been happening on a regular basis lets me know that it's definitely associated with winter time because this is winter time we have three days before winter officially starts and this storm system being a drop in barometric pressure i always have issues with drops in barometric pressures and sudden swings in temperature we were 90 degrees two days ago 90 degrees two days ago what temperature is it now 69 degrees inside 90 degrees two days ago ladies and gentlemen right now it's probably 80 degrees outside literally but inside it's only 69 and it's very cool in here that i have a jacket on i haven't turned the heater on today don't need it it's not freezing or anything but yeah this type of weather does a number on me and so it also because my body is having to regulate the temperature and regulate pain, yeah, it takes a lot of energy out of me. And I, I don't take that into consideration with being up 12 hours in front of this stupid computer. That's why I had to get a new chair. Chair is comfortable, and I'm rocking in it right now. And I like the fact that it lets me rock because, yeah. Uh-oh. Hey, I need y'all to hear this song right here. I need y'all to tell me what you think about this song right here. Her switchboard just lit up, y'all. Oh, GL! Hey, what up, GL? That's GL, y'all. He, he's a songwriter. He's had a couple of hits. Oh, y'all know who GL is? Hold on. Y'all know who GL is. Hey, GL, tell him who you really is. He's waiting, y'all. To turn his life around. That man. The way I used to feel. Never, never. He'll give anything. Ladies and gentlemen, Gerald LeBert. And I'll give anything. You know I have to play my music. Because... You see how well things change with the music, how it changes emotion, mood, tempo, feel. Because like I said, I was really not feeling very great with seeing the beginning of that. I'll do anything and everything to fall in love. Sorry, this is Joe LaVert, y'all. The late Joe LaVert. This man had some skill, y'all. This, this, this man had some skill. But anyway, like I said, music 
changes everything. So when you all are listening to the high tempo stuff, then you can't relax listening to high tempo stuff. But when you're listening to the mellow stuff, then you can relax. Because I'm doing too many things on a given basis, on a given day, at a given moment, I need to have variety. And so listening to something like this during the day, this helps out a great deal. So I am giving you guys a hint that if you find that you are depressed, then stop listening to depressing music. If you find that you're tired all the time, stop listening to music that's going to keep you tired all the time, keep you relaxed all the time. Okay, change your tempo, people. All of us, uh, there's a guy, his name is Terrence Howard. Many of you probably know Terrence Howard. Um, Terrence Howard was talking about frequencies and about how we are all programmed. We all have a rhythm. Our hearts beat at a certain rate, a certain pace. Every single thing about our bodies is all rhythm. Well, sometimes with all of the food and all of the chemicals and all of the sounds and all of the noise, our rhythm is thrown off. Ladies and gentlemen, change your tempo. As you've seen from the beginning of this video, I assure you, I was not in a very good mood. I was actually very depressed at seeing how they did that video. Again, I didn't want to watch George Floyd die again. And so I won't watch it today because I can't handle that today. Because I don't need my day ending that way. Okay? But I do know that I'm in a much better mood since I've listened to me some Deborah Cox and some Lauren Hill and some Gerald Levert, some GL, you know, because he'll do anything. So I'm suggesting that to the rest of you. Now, like I said, we were just going to talk today. I'm actually glad that I got to talk to you guys about that prophecy, about the propaganda that was going to happen in these last days. Most people don't understand the fact that it was prophesied. Now, if you go and you look, there's never been so much propaganda in our history, even with World War I, World War II, even with the Cold War. There's never been this much propaganda. A particular country killed three people. This is my girl, Whitney Houston. She'll get good love, y'all. She just won't be giving it no more. Okay? Because she found out, okay, what she's missing. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, a particular country killed three hostages yesterday. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on. They have their hands up. They're waving a white flag. An officer is shot. One of them is still alive. And they ordered ceasefire, ceasefire. And then another officer shoots again. You know what that tells me? Without the propaganda, that they are killing individuals indiscriminately whether they put their hands up or not Wh who's going to tell who's going to do anything about it we'll never find out all the people who died we'll never find out it doesn't make any sense ladies and gentlemen it doesn't make any sense they killed three hostages we don't even find out how many times each of the hostages were shot. Do you think they'll reveal that information? Of course not. They will not reveal that information. And of course, the hostages did not have guns. So why were they shot? They haven't told you that story yet, have they? Why were they shot? Three hostages. Why were they shot? They had their hands up. They admitted that. They're waving a makeshift white flag. They admitted that. So why were they shot? Did they pose a significant threat to military or military personnel? So why were they shot? How many times did they shot individuals who were not posing a significant threat to military or military interests? But they want to keep saying Hamas, 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 Hamas. Hamas did this, Hamas did that, Hamas did this, Hamas did that. 
And then they want to highlight raping of children, raping of women, raping of kids, raping of everybody. Everybody got raped. Pay attention. Everybody got raped. They're saying they can prove it. How are you going to prove it? How are you going to prove it? You didn't do any rape tests. They're just saying it. Ladies and gentlemen, I doubt very seriously if Hamas takes hostages and because they're said to be a certain religion that they would condone rape. Now, yeah, 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 yeah. It does happen in their society. It does happen. But the most religious zealots are not going to let it happen. Sorry, you need to understand the culture. But they know that the rest of the world doesn't understand that culture. And so they'll believe that they were indiscriminately raping the women. You notice how not all of the women and not all of the young girls were reporting that they got raped? Just even the older women didn't report it. We have hostages being released and waving bye-bye. And, and, you know, hugging and everything because they were talking about they were treated so well. So why are we getting two stories? Who do we believe? Now, Hamas didn't tell us the stories about the hostages being treated so well. The hostages were telling us that. Until there was a gag order placed on them to where they couldn't talk anymore. To where they were ordered not to talk about that. Who ordered them to do I have no idea. Ain't that something? Who would do something like that? You know what I mean? That's my girl. It was just, even though Clive Davis is a piece of <coughs> uh, something, um, Whitney could sing. It's just that you get to the point where something becomes a job and you don't love it anymore. And you can tell that that's what happened with her. It was it was a chore. It wasn't a job. It wasn't it wasn't life. You know I know this song. Dominoes by the Dominoes. And I've heard the song before. I, I just had to look, cause like I said, I downloaded a lot of music, and I just listened to the music. And I discovered a lot of artists that way, just by listening to just music that I've never heard before. But this one I heard before. I, I think, let me see, who is this supposed to be? I can't think of the name of the group. I downloaded their music yesterday, The Blackbirds. Okay, so uh, Blackbirds Walking in Rhythm, that group. All right, now look, ladies and gentlemen, we're going into a whole lot. So, I always like to give uh, something a benefit to people before I disconnect. So, we're already giving you the fact that we're going to create a template for you. And when we create that template, we're going to put it out there for you guys. Those of you who receive tax credits. If only you guys did your research on business credits and tax credits. So, let's do that now so that we give you guys that tidbit right now. Give me one second. We're gonna turn off the dominoes for a second so that we can focus. Watch this. Wake up. Wake up. Now it wants to be stupid again. Give me one second, y'all. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I said I have $85,000 in business tax credits, and I want to take the business credits received by my proprietorship, my sole proprietorship, uh, S-O-L-E hyphen proprietorship, and transfer them. I, I moved it back the wrong way. So and transfer them to my personal account. Now, I've documented my business relationship with my sole proprietorship, and although the law sometimes recognizes the sole proprietorship, not gold proprietorship, S-O-L-E, 
let's put your little hyphen there too so we keep in rhythm as being one and the same with the individual my sole proprietorship my people has its own EIN number and I have my own social security number separate from the two separating the two entities at irs.gov an individual can get a sole proprietor EIN number S O E just for this purpose to show the distinction between the two entities I need to transfer via the K1 form 8000 I mean 885 or 85 <laughs> $85,000. Now, I want y'all to pay attention to this so that you get it. If you listen to the court cases, if you listen to so-called certain angles of the law, it says that you are one and the same in a sole proprietorship. The sole proprietorship and you are the same. Okay? Now, he does that. He cannot offer advice or anything, and I'm not looking for him to offer advice. Okay? So now I got to get past that advice thing. Okay, give me one second. Now, I like the fact that while he while he did this right here, watch what he's going to tell me. While your understanding of the separate entities and sole proprietorship and social security number is accurate, transferring business credits directed to your personal account through a K-1 form might not be the most accurate approach. Here's why. The K-1 for sole proprietorships. K-1 forms are typically for partnerships. Okay, so let me correct him. Wake up. Wake up. One more time, ladies and gentlemen. Specifically, comma, that my social security number and the EIN number for the sole proprietorship created a partnership, comma, which I am allowed to do. Exclamation mark. So please answer my question within the parameters for which I gave you and stop giving me your opinion, comma, or changing the subject matter. Exclamation mark. Stop listening. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's been some back and forth between he and I. He hasn't answered my question, and so I had to let him know to stay out of my business. See, the legal agreement, none of your concern. Stay out of my business and answer the question according to the parameters that I've given him. So what's happening, now he's answering the question. So ladies and gentlemen, those of you who've received tax credits, and you receive them in the all caps name, you don't realize that the all caps name is not you. The law recognizes the all caps name as not being you. Even if it was a trust, a corporation, doesn't matter. It's not you. Social security number. Transfer it all to the social security number. That way you can file it on your taxes. You can show that you received it from the corporation. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to let you know that we are going to be offering a service. We're going to be offering a service. It's going to be a range around $150 for you to receive a corporation in your name, nonprofit organization. It's going to be about $150 that includes everything, the blah, 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 the registering and all that stuff. And to get the EIN number, that'll be another uh, so-called $15. So 165 if you want us to get the EIN, if you already have the EIN, uh, for your all caps name, which is simple, 
because we just told you about getting the sole proprietor EIN. Ta-da! But hold on. Hold on. You're going to call the corporation the all caps name, and you're going to put the word estate at the end. Don't want you to just do a simple sole proprietorship. We need you to call it an estate. Sorry. All right, and we'll take care of everything from there. But we'll tell you about that soon. Not offering it now. Tell you about it soon, sometime beginning of the year. Supposed to have done it two months ago, but no. Now, hold on now. I've already done it. Okay? Got a bank account and the estate name. Okay? That's because the law allows it. So, basically, you're going to take your credits and you're going to transfer it to your business. Now, he says box number 19. Uh-uh. Box number 19 is the wrong box. I believe it's um, one of the forms is box number either 13 or 16, but 19 ain't it. Okay? Now, he's doing this on purpose, and he gives you the wrong box because yeah, that's the way he's trained. Okay? He's not going to tell you everything. He's going to mislead you, but he's going to tell you the right stuff you need to do because you got the right one. Bye-bye. Okay, now let's look here. Let's see if he gives me any boxes. Yeah, he still says box number 19, so he's wrong again there. And let's go here. I'm not going to tell you how to fill it out. Do not call. Do not ask. Do not ask for a consult. Is somebody telling you how to fill out the form? That's not what a consult is. I will take you and direct you to the IRS website because that's what they do. I don't do that. Do, 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 do that. Now, I just did a video yesterday showing you guys exactly this information I'm about to show you right now. Just in case you don't think I know what I'm talking about. This is the IRS code. This is definitions. Definition of partnership right here. Partnership and or partner. The term partnership includes a syndicated group, a pool, a joint venture, or any other unincorporated organization. Through or by which means any business. So proprietorship, personal business. Financial operation or venture is carried on in which is not within the meaning of this title, excuse me, and which is not within the meaning of this title, a trust and a state. Now, hold on now. You're going to call it an estate. Pay attention, but not within the meaning of this title, because in the meaning of this title, that's a deceit in the state. We're not doing a deceit in the state. Anyway, corporation and the term partner includes a member of such Includes and does not exclude a member of a member in such a syndicate group pooling venture or other organization. Then it gets the definition of corporation and let's see if we get. Oh, look at that! There is no definition for a state. Look at there. Now watch this. Hold on. Control F. E S T A T E. Oh, fourteen times. Fourteen. Fourteen times. Any estate other than a foreign estate within the meaning of paragraph 31. Let's go see what paragraph 31 has to say. Hold on now. Foreign estate or trust. Foreign estate or trust. We're not looking for foreign estate. Don't need to read it. Real estate mortgages. Not looking for real estate. Real estate. Real estate investment. Nope. Not looking for that type of an estate. Uh-oh. We done come all the way to the end. Well, look at there, y'all, within the definition of an estate within this chapter. Well, we ain't within that definition. This, this section 31 talking about foreign trusts and estate. So any trust, any estate other than a foreign estate within the meaning of paragraph 31. Any estate other than a foreign estate. Pay attention so that y'all get it. Any estate other than a foreign estate within the meaning of paragraph 31. and any trust if so pay attention to what it says the term united states person means a citizen or resident of the united states okay it says any estate so i don't mind it being a united states person okay but here's where we have to go back to partnership so that y'all get it, because some of y'all ain't going to get it. Partnership is basically any group, any pooling, pooling and servicing agreement, that pooling, uh, bringing a bunch of junk together, joint venture and or unincorporated 
organization. Sole proprietorship is an unincorporated organization. If you don't believe me, go take a look at the definition. Watch this. Let's do this so that you guys will see that it will fit within a definition as the way the code is written. Yeah, I, I, I do that a lot when I'm holding the mouse and trying to select. And I thought it wasn't going to do it. So let's do it this way. We will right to left. I mean, left to right as opposed to right to left. Okay, now we're going to go back here. The bar. Watch this. We can go right to Bart and say, hey, Bart, answer this question, moron. And Bart going to be like, you ain't going to be calling me too many more morons. I'm be like, mother, I can call you whatever I want. You're going to think your name is Blondie. Call me, call me. Hold up. I want to apologize. Get back to my music. Also known as an unincorporated association, it's a group of two or more people with who join together for lawful purpose without formally registering as a separate legal entity. Here are some key points to understanding about them. Now remember, not a separate legal entity, unlike corporations, limited liability corporations, an unincorporated organization is not considered a distinct legal entity for its members. This means the organization itself cannot own property either into or enter into contracts or sue in its own name. But yes, it can. Uh, and again, that's what a sole proprietorship is, ladies and gentlemen. It's an unincorporated organization. You're not incorporated. It's a sole proprietorship. Even though you have an EIN number, you don't have to be a part of a corporate structure. You, doesn't have, you don't have to have a treasurer, a president, and a secretary and all of that stuff. It's unincorporated. It's not a corporation, even though it has an EIN number. Because that's how they write the stupid laws. Don't ask me. I can tell you just by looking at the name what the loophole is. Okay? So there's your loophole. We gave we gave you two. One that you can use your sole proprietorship by getting a separate EIN number for it, and it'd be a separate entity. And you can transfer credits between you and your sole proprietorship, and there is nothing they can say because they're two separate and distinct entities. Social Security number, EIN number, not the same thing when they're two different numbers. Two separate entities. Each Social Security number, each EIN number represents a separate entity. Watch this. Wake up. Wake up. Okay, I know what the problem has been, the delay is. It's been listening. And so when I pause you guys, it goes ahead and types up everything that I've said so far. So here's the question. Is it true that each separate EIN represents a separate entity, even if owned by the same corporation? I don't know what answer it's going to give me, but let's go ahead and ask. Now, I know the answer should be, yes, it is true. See, not always straightforward. See, generally, yes. Okay, that's all I wanted to hear. Now, watch this. Because right now, he's getting technical. And I don't care about the technicalities. I'm caring about the fact that an EIN number, Social Security number and an EIN number are two separate. Okay, things. So, what we're going to do is we're going to come over here. And after we come over here, we can go... No, I got I to gotta put the question here because what happens is this particular conversation that I'm having right there, uh, I copied and pasted the information into a particular document, and the document hasn't populated. Each separate EIN number represents a separate entity, if even if owned by the same corporation, according to the Internal Revenue Service. If a business owner operates multiple businesses, that are not established as legally separate entities, they can use the same EIN number for all of them. However, if the businesses are considered separate legal entities, such as subsidiaries operated under a parent company, each must have its own separate EIN number for tax purposes. Ta-da! So now I take this junk and give me a second. Let's see if it's still having a problem pulling up. And I think it is. See, yeah, see how it's stuck? So I can't finish. And so I can't delete that. I need this to stay. So I can't get rid of it. 
Oh, this is the other one. Did I? Yeah, that that's a different Bart. This is this Bart. Two Barts. Okay, and now we take you. Tap, tap, tap. Uh-oh, why? And where's number two? I know there's got to be a there's number one. And watch this. This is me correcting him. And then I'll let you guys go. Like I said, this is for you guys who are trying to do your tax credit. This is for you to get an understanding of what you're doing. Okay. That is an excellent summary of the rule around employer identification numbers and the association with businesses. You've accurately described the key point. One EIN per legal entity, each distinct legal entity like a corporation. So ladies and gentlemen, if you have two EIN numbers or an EIN number and a social security number, those are two separate entities. Ta-da! So taking your tax credits and transferring it to a sole proprietorship, from the sole proprietorship to you, or from you to the sole proprietorship. You get to do that. From an estate to the sole proprietorship or to a state, from the estate to you, you get to do that. From the trust to you, you get to do that. People are asking me, how do you set up a trust? How do I set up a trust? I wanna know. I wanna know. Don't trust the feeling. How will I know? Okay, S-A-T-C-O-M-M, -M. SATCOM. We can go to the regular SATCOM website. Satcom, 911.com. Satcom. Satcom. See right here? Start your own project. This is how you start your own. Let's click on it. Somebody asked me about this today. Let's click on it. See the big, huge black? Click on it. Start your own project. S Y O P. SUP. What's up? What's up, homie? Okay. This is where you can go and get your education on how to start your own trust, how to set up your own trust, ladies and gentlemen. This is where you go. This part right here, not so much. Okay, we have not cleared this up. All right. Um, and it says, should you not be able to relax while we design your sat pack tailored for your needs? And so we did that for a lot of years. But the rest of y'all, y'all want to know how to do your own SAP pack? We explain right here the things that you'll need to include in your trust. Just that simple. Literally, just that simple. And then you go to the PDF section. Watch this. PDF. Our current PDFs. PDFs or SACOM 911 forward slash PDFSs. PDFS, all capital. PDFS. And you'll pull this site up. Where's my search bar? Hey, homie, where's the search bar? Hey, I want to go to the bar. Where's the search bar? Now, this is going to take a minute because this is a lot of page. See right there? Now, we want to do a search. So right here, we're going to put T-R-U-S-T. I'm just going to put trust me. I trust. Okay, look at that. Trust documents. Look at that. Substitution trustee. Nope. Modification of deed of trust. Nope. Declaration of invocation of trust, nope. Uniform trust law, nope, don't want that. That's the study of trust. You can do that. Revocable, irrevocable trust, common law trust declaration. Uh-oh. Uh, let's see. What's the other? Common law trust declaration. Got a bunch of them. Handbook on trust invisible. And let's see. Outline. Nevis trust amendments. Public trust, no, trust indentured act, trust PDF, I don't know what that is. Uniform trust law, uniform trust code, wise thesis, and let's see. Trust layout. I'm a trust layout. Give me a second, I gotta check out trust layout. Is that gonna be trust layout or trust PDF? So let's see if we can enlarge this and see if this will get us, oh, this is trust Black's Law Dictionary. So this is explaining y'all what a trust is. Okay, ta-da! All right, let's get back to where we were. And let's see, trust documents. That's not the only trust. 
And let's see, amendment to trust, attorney definition, annual tax credits, corporate proof, common law trust declaration. Well, technically, you can take the declaration for the common law trust, and you can create a trust agreement out of this declaration. There are certain features that a trust must have, okay? Certain features. This is from an actual website with a company, okay? You can take this and make that into your trust document and then also have the trust declaration. It's Department of Financial Institution. That's their junk. All right, hold on now. We ain't finished, y'all. We ain't finished. We got a long way to go. No, we ain't got a long way to go because I'm getting off of this because I wasn't planning on talking this long. I'm got to go and take care of some things outside. Uh, certificate of... Uh, give me one second. Give me one second. Let me find it, and then I'll show it to you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we didn't create these documents. At least the 99.5% of the documents we haven't created. 5% of the documents we created. But I want you guys to do this. How to create a pure trust contract. This is the one. I'm going to tell you that it looks like it's pretty accurate from the beginning. Okay? So... I'm going to tell you just how much I love you. Now, I don't like this thing, Affidavit of Truth. And I don't like this Build Freedom Sovereignty Affidavit of Truth. Declare your sovereignty. You are not sovereign. That's why I said these are not our documents. So I, you're going to have to change some things because you are not sovereign. You cannot be sovereign in America nor any other country. Okay, you're not a subject either. You're one of the people representing the sovereignty of the United States. Okay, you are one of those people. You can represent the sovereignty of the United States. There's nobody who can check you on that. But it tells you how to set up a trust. Okay, just got to watch your language. Watch your mouth, boy. Now, that's the first thing. Second thing, I saw this, and I, I haven't looked at this in a while. So I'm about to click on it. Y'all can see what it's talking about in a second. Hold on now. That's also me yawning, because I was tired. Follow the instructions. You will need any court case number, and it tells you how to go to Fidelity.com and look up your bond information for your case. Many of you, there are tons of videos on YouTube showing you how to do this. Now, be, what, since this has been published 2011, they've changed it a little bit, but not much. So go to YouTube and find out how to look up your bond information. And give me one more second. I don't know if it's the Living Trust. And I think it might be the living trust. You don't want to call it a living trust, okay? Living trust is not your word. You don't want to call it a living trust. Now, that one's the handbook on common law trust. I decided I wanted to download that. Handbook on common law trust. That's all on the SACOM website. All that junk is free. You ain't got to pay for none of this. Okay, you ain't got to pay for none of this. This is all free. All free. Pure trust contract, pure contract trust. Go ahead, y'all. Go and learn how to create your own trust. Write-off procedure. Tax credit write-off procedure. That's even there. Okay? All of this stuff here. Go ahead and read. Create your own trust. No, what? Well, what I would tell you what I would do if I didn't know how to create a trust. Pay attention. I would go get a copy of somebody else's trust, especially a bank's trust or something like that. And I just see the format. And then I go find one of those generic trusts. Like uh, there are a couple of websites you can go to. Lawyer website like uh, Law Depot or Rocket Lawyer. Go to any one of them. They give a trust for free. They'll give you a living trust for free. That's why I clicked on this living trust junk. So give it a second. Let me see what it does, dude. So one second, I'll be right back. All right. I'm opening it up now. Just ready to get rid of y'all because I thought I was going to be able to go out there. Once. Irrevocable.
irrevocable. All caps that. All caps that. Agreement. All caps that. Stop listening. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm doing is I'm editing this real quick. For replacements, that's the first thing. It's going to say irrevocable trust agreement everywhere. That's the first thing. Now, we got to get rid of one other word. You know what that word is? Revocable or revocable. So... Most of these living trusts are going to say it's revocable. You don't want to have a revocable trust. You want to always do an irrevocable trust. Why? Because it can withstand a lot more scrutiny. See? Just as I suspected. Uh-oh, got to undo that because it. I didn't do whole world words only, and that's what I got to do. Whole words only. And then we do one more again. It should be, hey, of course there is more revocable trust. All right. Now we got, it says no revocable. So we fine. Now let's see. This is a trust agreement, ladies and gentlemen. The only thing you have to do is go ahead and take care of it to fit you. And if you think something doesn't apply, then take it out. Okay. If you think something doesn't apply, take it out. This is an actual trust agreement. All right. No, by the way, you always want to do a giraffe. Go and discover what a giraffe is. Do not do those stupid uh, acknowledgments. Stay away from acknowledgments. You tell the notary, you have the right to do a giraffe. You want to do a giraffe. Acknowledgement. You don't need to acknowledge nothing. Mother. Anyway. That's what y'all need to know. Now, voice is starting to crack, which shows that I was tired, y'all. So I got to go tired myself by laying down and watching. Oh, sorry. Those of you, you're going to hear me talk about this again. This ain't going to be the only time. Give me one second. All righty then. What we're going to do is we're going to... No, I don't want to do across my channel. I want YouTube. YouTube. Yo, 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 YouTube. Hold on. It's playing around. Y O U Tubi.com. So when you go to YouTube.com, because I'm so sick and tired, there, there ain't no movies out because them actors, they were on strike and they came up with a tentative deal, tentative offer, but it's going to be a minute before we have something worthwhile. And this is that time of year where ooh, all the commercials and everything and everybody on vacation and reruns and rewrites and watching the same old Todd junk that we saw in 1934 because they had Christmas in 1934 for some stupid reason and, 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 and on 84th Street and all of that stuff and it's a wonderful life. You know, oh, I'm tired of all of that. So pay attention. Watch this. G-A-M-E. Come on now. See? Just as I said it. Oh. Okay, that's that's not what I was looking for. I thought that was uh thought I was looking for get out of here. Oh, sorry. It did what I asked it to do. Okay, game M O V I E S. Game movies. Okay? Now we want this out scenes, cut scenes. Cut scenes. We want that one. But we don't want that one. We want see we want this one. Okay? But I need to see this right. Get, come on, get on out of here. 
Oh, it didn't show it to me. I, I did the wrong thing. Got to go back. Okay. Nope, that ain't the one I was looking at. It was something that was talking about. I, 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 I was going to click on some bait. Ooh-wee. Yeah, I, I can't click on that bait, y'all. Oh, that, see, they tracking me here on this one. That's why I got all this showing up here. I ain't asked for that. All right, pay attention, y'all. We're going to go cutscenes. Now, y'all need to y'all need to pay them attention. These are them video games that them children be playing, and them adults who think they're children. This is the stuff they play, but this one is five hours long, and it's a movie, okay? And let's see. I, I got too much violence. There. I ain't got time for that. Uh, I haven't watched the Spider-Man one yet. That's coming later. Hold on now. This is, I spend my, this is my distraction for my getting through the night. Terminator 107? Uh-oh. Because you know this, they're going to go all the way to 10. And my this thing, even though I'm scrolling, it ain't letting me scroll. It's about time. So I just wanted to point out, oh, the one that I've been watching, the one that I'm very impressed with is Detroit. Um, I watch Mafia, Mafia one, two, and three. Mafia, yeah, I like Mafia. Okay, and 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 and, and hold on, Detroit Uncovered. That's the one. Detroit Uncovered, Mafia two. See, full game, and it's all right. Everything. Where's my Detroit? Come on now. It ain't letting me scroll, y'all. It's playing games. Oh, I know why. Come on. One second, people. What I'm going to have to do, because right now I'm watching uh, 2077. I uh, forgot what the full... Um, movie is called, but it's 2077, something 2077, and it's I, right, you know, but for the sake of everything, I done downloaded about 12 of these, maybe 20 uh, in all, and so what I have to do, and I think in order for me to be able to show y'all some, because none of these are any that I've watched, I haven't seen a single one that I've watched so far, but I, I've watched the Halos did that months ago. So I've taken care of Halos. And Halos are aight. You know what I'm saying? I like the Halos. They are aight. And it's just, if you can get past the fact that realizing that it's a game and all they're doing is cutting out all of the gameplay portions and letting you see the actual movie, then you, you will get it. Sorry, I'm shutting that down because that was interfering with me getting to my scenes. So well, we're gonna come up here and watch this. We're gonna come up here. We're gonna go right here, if it lets me. D E T Detroit Un C O V E R E D. Detroit Uncovered. See? Oh, Detroit Become Human. That's what it is. Detroit Become Human. I've been messing that up for the last couple of times I've been trying to find it. Detroit Become Human. That's the one. Okay? And I assure you, if you get the one that's the whole movie, which is definitely going to be about... This one would probably be the whole one. Okay? This is the whole movie. This one... Yeah, I would definitely say is a winner. I would definitely say watching Detroit Uncovered. Uh, I'd say Uncovered, but Become Human. Uh, Detroit Become Human. Now, this one says it's the Ruthless Edition. And what they mean by is that when they did this one, they chose all of the mean things. Okay? So, there you go. I would, hey, Kara. That's Kara, y'all. See, Kara. That's Kara. Kara, she's all right. 
but I got to know Kara after I watched the movie. Then I watched the one on Kara, and she went through a whole lot, y'all. All right, got to go. Y'all take care. I'm out of here.